in this video I would like to talk to you about the effect of death. So we've talked in the previous video about the effect of life, how life determines for a large part where you um, belong and will move to and what kind of opportunities you will have. Um, but the moment of death, how you die, when you die, where you die, is also of a big significance. Like the effect is not as long lasting, but it is quite strong. So it is good to be able to realize where you are and what to expect. If people die relatively young, then often they have a lot of these yeah, lower things which I discussed previously, which will pull you towards a reincarnation. So you have a lot of desires, you have a lot of passions, um, you have a lot of attachments, and all these things in a way weigh down your energy body. So your energy body will tend to be rather heavy. It cannot reach higher levels. Your consciousness also therefore cannot rise. You cannot make contact with higher beings. Um, you won't be able to see angels or spirits or even other dead people. You may be in a way stuck in a kind of a mirror of, um, yeah, of the physical uh, world. And um, because the energy body is so heavy, we also tend to get pulled very quickly into the uh, next incarnation. And if we die when we're in a way old and have seen it all and don't want any more and we've, we're satisfied, then it's much easier to in a way rise up to uh, after, very quickly after death to these higher worlds where we can experience yeah, higher spiritual beings. And often people in the last stages of their, of their life will already be uh, leaving their body quite regularly and building up contacts with these higher beings. So it is in a way more natural, in a way it's a smaller step, a smaller shock for a person to die when they're in a way more prepared, have gone through more stages of letting go, of being in a way satisfied with their life rather than clinging to it. The manner of death is also uh, important because the kind of energies we have um, in a way can catapult us both upward or downward. Um, if we're dying in a situation where we're in a lot of confusion or pain or uh, something like this, often like a violent death or a so-called untimely death, um, then our spirit is in a way pulled down by these heavy emotions of anger, fear, frustration, uh, bewilderment. Um, well, if we die in a, in a very conscious manner, with almost a curiosity, like, or a longing um, for yeah, what comes after we leave after our body, but the experience is very different. We tend to catapult ourselves upward. Um, we can also manipulate this a little bit. Um, one option which we can use is to use a, a turquoise stone uh, or some other mineral which will absorb these negative energies like anger, fear. And, but because these energies are absorbed by the stone, they're not so much in our own energy bodies. And so if I were to die in an accident or something else, while well, having this stone, all this energy which is generated by the, the passing is then in a way taken away by that stone, so my own energy body doesn't get weighed down as much. Besides, in a way, removing this ballast from the energy body, you can also in a way charge the energy body by in a way wearing a blessed object and the high energies of this blessed object will also impact and be absorbed by your own energy body and it will tend to float upward. So you can in a way envision your spirit as a balloon and have your energies tend to work as a ballast, pulling it down while the yeah, higher energies are more like heat, the hot air balloon, which make it lighter and which make it go up. So 
the consciousness we have, but also the transformation of our energy body towards the moment of death is very important. So for people who can see their death coming, I would advise spend the last few weeks by trying to lightening your load, trying to get rid of and transform your fear, your anger, your frustration by practicing uh, forgiveness, uh, letting go, uh, acceptance. Both giving and asking for forgiveness is very important so that we, our anger, our hatred, our lower emotions can dissolve more easily. There's also a lot of um, questions I get about suicide. Um, of course there are many religious books which are warning against suicide. And there's a good reason for that because usually people who commit suicide are not in the best frame of mind. They're usually very angry, depressed and frustrated, which in a way results in after death they will go down to yeah, what is experienced as a, as a hell dimension uh, because they're in a way dragged down be, yeah, below their normal level. So in a way by committing suicide, letting go of the body, you lose the ability to transform those energies and more easily because you have a body which is very capable of transforming energies and as a spirit you lack a lot of that capability and you're still stuck with that same feelings. So in those cases suicide is indeed in a way causing you to well not so much go to hell but to continue the hell and have less of an escape as you would have had when you had a body. Um, but it is very different in a way from uh, in a way committing suicide to end a suffering so then it is not done out of anger or um, um, despair or frustration but rather um, because your uh, in a way continuation of life is not healthy for your spirit because out of all the suffering and pain and frustration of your um, yeah, condition. You're in a way also creating more and more ballast, more and more weight, which is affecting your energy body. So if you're in a situation which has no remedy, which cannot become better, can only become worse, then suicide is in a way a way to prevent more damage to the energy body. And it's always a little bit difficult to know whether a situation is curable or not because yeah miracles do happen whether they're spiritual or scientific in nature um, so a lot of things which you may think can never be changed maybe in five or ten years or twenty years they can be changed and sometimes it is good to have that patience but yeah and sometimes it is indeed better to say like okay this is yeah in a way my whole condition is just going backwards, I'm losing all the progress I had and I should get out of the game while I'm ahead. So, but there, there is a very different state of mind also in uh, when you kill yourself or are killed using euthanasia techniques. So it is much more of a, a sense of uh, liberation of um, not having to be dragged down by your yeah, body anymore, not having the pain or the difficulty breathing or the fatigue or other forms of suffering weighing on you anymore. So the spirit often feels happy and liberated and feels that it can actually ascend to its natural level. So there the suicide ascends in a more heaven-like experience or purgatory-like experience rather than the damnation which is can also be experienced. So other things which are um, important are at the moment of death there is a part of your energy body which in a way will dissolve just like the physical body will naturally dissolve, rot away also part of the energy body will, uh, will do that. And just like yeah, a cadaver lying somewhere in the wild will attract all kinds of uh, animals and insects and fungi to uh, consume it, so will your energy body. 
So our energy bodies are also prone to being feasted upon by all kinds of other spirits and beings. And this can be a very traumatic experience because people in a way are still identified with who they are with their energy body, they still feel it. And to have it burned away, ripped apart, be devoured uh, can be a very traumatic experience in the afterlife. So typically what people used to do is to uh, make sure that uh, the places where people are uh, buried or cremated or um, where the bodies are kept are kept free of such a spirit so that the person can in a way um, decide for themselves to let go of the body they can say goodbye to their body and yeah have some time for them to decide what to do with it they can indeed abandon those energies and say like this i cannot take with me so i'll just leave it behind they can also choose to donate it certain powers spiritual talents they are part of a family line so always one incarnated person of the family carries that power and if you were the one who was carrying a certain talent you die you may gift that part of the energy body which you cannot take with you to a family member for instance or even a friend or a lo another loved one so that that power remains on the earth so it can fulfill its purpose rather than be lost and this is in a way also a big problem with humanity that people have in a way forgotten how to transfer their powers their, which they have upon death to other, uh, other incarnated humans so more and more of all these wisdom and talents which have been built up through the ages are basically just left to rot and destroy and be destroyed so if you're listening to this please think of it try to remind yourself when you die don't just run away take care of what you have been given what you have developed in life and see if somebody else has a use for it and the parts which yeah if you don't have a use for well they can either be indeed devoured by other spirits or disintegrate by themselves Another risk is also necromancers because there are people, magicians, who sustain themselves either in life or after life by yeah, preying on dead people and taking these parts of their uh, energy bodies. So in a way necromancers are doing what dead people would should be doing naturally, namely giving certain powers and talents to incarnated people necromancers are not waiting to be given something but often just take it to become more powerful in life uh, but also after death they can also sustain their power and their energy bodies by having this skill of absorbing that but i'm digressing a little bit um, because I was about to say it is very important to have a place which is kept clear of these yeah, um, cadaver eaters, these parasitical spirits and necromancers so that you can in a way go through the transition in peace. Uh, unfortunately most modern burial grounds have not been blessed properly, do not have the proper spiritual protections so they're in a way yeah turning into uh, yeah a feast where the recently deceased are feasted upon um, by these other powers fortunately um, it's a temporary process because yeah once the energy body has been devoured there's nothing more for them to to take so yeah after a few months the spirit will be free anyway but yeah having gone through that is a rather horrifying experience and often very traumatic and um, the, the spirit itself will be in a way uh, traumatized and will take that trauma with them to work on uh, afterwards so it is better to prevent that i would say by properly protecting and blessing places where yeah dead bodies are kept and Let's hope that people will take better care of their, uh, yeah, 
uh, of themselves and others after they are no longer physically uh, in a physical body. Usually the transition period for the, the first transition of letting go of these physical parts is about six weeks. Um, it can be a bit longer, up to three months. So if you want to be safe, try to ensure that your body is kept in a, in a place where it won't be harmed by negative spirits, a blessed space for at least three months. Um, another thing to decide is in a way whether uh, how you want your body to be disposed of. Like if it is buried, the, um, yeah, you in a way will have to work yourself to transform the energies which are still connected to the body, which the body is slowly releasing. Um, if in a way you are eaten or you're burnt, then there is a lot less time. Uh, if you're eaten it is very easy because the animal which will eat your flesh will also absorb your energies for the largest part. Um, so you don't have to dispose of energies because yeah, the, in a way your talents, your powers will then be absorbed by um, the animal eating you. And this is in a way also where ritual cannibalism has its purpose by in a way um, eating the, the ancestor or member of the tribe in a way the powers they possess instead of the person themselves giving them to somebody else they're in a way taken by the people who eat the body so it's also a form of necromancy but then using the physical body rather than using magic um, yeah the last part uh, cremation cremation is a um, has its pros and cons. The pros are that the energy gets transformed, you have no choice in it. Um, also it happens very quickly, so often the person is very unable to catch or hold on or to manage the energies being released by the body which is burnt very rapidly. Um, so in a way to be able to deal and completely harvest the energy which comes out of a cremation is very difficult. So you have to, dis in a way, accept that, okay, I, if I'm being cremated, I won't be able to take everything with me, uh, probably. Uh, a lot of things will be, yeah, will be lost, unless you're very well prepared to, in a way, transfer them after death, before the body is cremated. So you have a, a much smaller time window um, to, in a way, give your energetic inheritance to people if you're uh, choosing for cremation. The good thing is that you can be very sure that all these lower energies, including a lot of fears, anger, desires and other things which would otherwise potentially contaminate and weigh down your energy body, are also transformed. So it is, in a way, um, a strategy of minimizing risk but therefore also possibly minimizing the rewards of your life.